normal symptoms of a tethered cord, right, are abnormalities with the neurosensory of the legs and then the function of the bowel bladder. So pain, um, although this is an uncommon uh, indicator of tethering, you can see that in our study several years ago that we published, uh, I think pain was in only, I wanna say mm, 17, 19% of the kids, it was it was a very uncommon indicator, but yet it had one of the best responses. And that's what the literature shows. It has, when you, a, 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 a well-selected population. So I'm not talking your teenage child that has lots of social and emotional stressors that are complaining of pain, but your three-year-old child, a three-year-old really has no reason to complain of pain. If the child complains of back pain, pain into the legs, especially with increasing activity, that's concerning if they also have evidence of tethering on their imaging. A change in stamina, a change in their gait, increasing fatigue, so increasing weakness in their legs, a change in their walking pattern, a change in their tone, so that they've got increased tightness or spasticity, an increase in sensory loss, and of course, a change in their bowel or bladder function, increasing scoliosis or spinal curvature, and then there's many cutaneous markers that we can see. We can see abnormal hair. You can see abnormal vascular markings. You can see the little pin opening of a dermal sinus tract. You can see skin um, tags or a dorsal, or almost looks like a tail, a dorsal tail, um, deviated gluteal creases. So abnormalities over the spinal midline. Our workup for us, I'm very spoiled. I'm here at Lurie. I have a beautiful, uh, well-developed multidisciplinary clinic and terrific colleagues, right? Because I'm a neurosurgeon and I look at an MRI and indeed that child has a lipomyelomeningocele. But as I tell the family, I, I can't look at that MRI and tell you if the child's having symptoms or not any more than I can look at their brain MRI and tell you if they can play the piano. So I very much need that my colleagues in urology and orthopedics to help me assess, do they, are these legs weak? weak? Are there, is there a foot deformity there? Is there a cavus? Do they have abnormal tone? I need urology to evaluate the bladder and tell me, do they have abnormal functioning? Do they have too high of pressures? Is it a big bladder that doesn't empty well? Um, and uh, you know, the, the good thing about a multidisciplinary approach is we're talking all the time. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.